Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. Today, I'm going to talk about my configuration files. So, anyone who's been following my channel knows that I have configuration files in my GitLab repository, and it's free for anyone who wants to download and use them. And the thing is about configuration files is sometimes they get neglected. <laughs> and every once in a while you need to clean them up and update them or make changes to them. And sometimes things even stop working in them because the, a particular distribution or a particular application might change, have changes in it that won't work with your configuration file. So anyways, to make a long story short, recently I cleaned up my configuration files, I updated them, and I'm going to give you a brief tour of it. So, let's get to it. So this is my real bare metal computer. This is the computer I do all my uh, production on, make my videos in it. And uh, it's running Arch Linux with the i3 window manager. So anyways, I'm going to open up a terminal and I'm going to CD into my mesh folder. So I'm going to CD mesh and I'm going to clear the screen and let's ls it. So I made lots of changes in it within the past week. And of course we have Arch folder, Debian folder. Now I have a free BSD folder, a ghost BSD folder, a Linux Mint Debian folder, a Linux Mint Ubuntu folder, and a void folder. Now the void folder, I haven't cleaned it up yet or updated it. And the reason why is I haven't used void. My last video on void was I think March of this year. And right now it's October and I've never lived in void and I've never used void long-term. So like I said, the last time I played with void or even made a video on it was back in March. So really what I have to do is a fresh install of void and I have to use it and play with it and see what in that folder is not working or what needs to be updated or changed. So everything in here has been updated and changed except for the void folder. So I guess we'll just go in order. <laughs> let's CD into Arch. Let's clear the screen. Let's LS it. And this is my Arch folder. You know, let's, let's clean it up. Let's LL it. And my face is not in the way. That's good. Ooh, there's a lot of files in there. <laughs> let's do a page up. So there's a lot of files in there. Of course, the Arch folder is my biggest folder. And the reason why is that all my computers at home are running Arch Linux. Arch Linux is my favorite distribution. And I do more videos on Arch Linux than anything else. And I know and understand Arch Linux better than the other distributions. So oh, that's why the Arch Linux folder is biggest. And also, because when I do a installation of Arch Linux, regardless of whether I'm doing a manual install or using the, what is, what is it, three-year-old, relatively new Arch Linux automated installer, I always do a base install, regardless of whether I'm using the installer or doing a manual install. I do a base install and then I install all my favorite, app, favorite apps and everything. So that's my, uh, like I said, that folder has more stuff in it than the other ones. And let's go down. And this is always changing. So I'm not going to show you too much about what I've done in here because this folder is always changing. I'm always updating it. I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to do it this way. It's a little easier to look at. Now, of course, it doesn't show the dot files when I'm looking at it this way. I guess I could do it this way. LS dash A. So there, now it's showing the dot files and it's a little easier to look at. And I have a DWM folder that's been there for a while. The i3 and the i3 status folders are only a couple months old. And the, uh, so like I said, I have an awesome folder in here a DWM folder, an i3 folder, a Qtile folder, and lots of files. And like I said, this is always updating. So I didn't really go out of my way to update this folder and things in it because I'm always making changes in it. So I'm not going to give you any more of a tour of this. 
So let's go back to Mensch. Let's clear the screen. Now let's go into the Debian folder, CD Debian. And this Debian folder, I made some changes. I added a I3 and I3 status to it recently, last week. Um, the auto app, I added things to it. So let's Vim into auto. So in my Debian auto app, I added some more programs. Uh, now the thing is, is that if you go through the automated installer in Debian, it's going to give you a lot of stuff. But I added some stuff that I don't think it's going to give you. And you can see it goes from line 6 to line 28. And I'm not going to read out all the apps that are in there, but that's it there. So this has been updated recently, and I'm going to get out of there. And also the run config. Let's vim into run configs. So I added a little bit. I changed the run config a bit, and I put it in there for it to copy my i3 and my i3 status folders into your home directory, your home dot config directory. Now let's CD out of there and just, you know what? I just want to go back into my Arch one, CD Arch. So I'm going to vim into my auto app in Arch just to show you. So of course, Arch has my, the most uh, files and apps that it's down, the auto app is downloading. If we go to the bottom, so you see the first app is on line six. If you go to the bottom, it has 87 lines. Now, recently in a video, I mentioned this, and I said it had about 55 apps. <laughs> but it's a lot more than that. It's 87. So 87, and like I said, and that's because when I install Arch, regardless of whether I'm doing a manual install or using the automated installer, I... I always do a base install, and then I put all the apps and files that I want in there. And let's get out of there. And let's just take a quick look at my run configs app in for Arch. Vim run. So my run config app in Arch is the largest one out of all the others. It's doing more. It's copying over some wallpapers. It's copying over uh, the awesome window manager the QTAL window manager, the i3 and the i3 status configuration files. It's setting up LightDM. It's enabling and setting up the firewall. It's enabling and setting up LightDM. The login manager or the display manager, okay? And again, this is doing more than what it does in my other apps. Let's get out of there. Let's CD minus one. Let's clear the screen. Let's LS it. So I already showed you the Debian. And you can see it was a lot smaller. And let's just go in order. So now I'm going to go into the FreeBSD folder, ls8. And there's the files there. And you can see it has awesome. Let's just clear the screen. So you can see it has the awesome window manager configuration, the i3 configurations, and my QTAL configurations. Let's take a look at my run config file. So we're going to cd, oops. We're going to vim into run configs. And again, it's copying. As you can see, it's a little smaller. It's copying some wallpaper. It's going to copy my awesome configuration file, my QTAL configuration file, my i3 configuration file, and my i3 status. It, on line 10, you can see it's going to copy my configuration file for the firewall. Now, in FreeBSD, it's not uncomplicated firewall. They don't have uncomplicated firewall available. But they have other firewalls that come installed, but you have to write configuration files for them. And it's a very basic configuration file, but it's going to copy it over and it's going to turn the service on. So line 10 is going to copy my, my very, very simple and very, very basic configuration file or PF firewall in FreeBSD. It's going to copy the config over. Line 12 is going to start it and make sure it turns on every time you reboot into your system. Now, one thing I want to do, and I should have did this before I turned the video on, should have made did this off camera, but I forgot and I started rolling. So I'm going to do it now on camera. I'm going to change something in my FreeBSD and in my GhostBSD. So FreeBSD, we're going to take a look at our auto app, Vim auto app for FreeBSD. And it's pretty long. <laughs> and let's go to the bottom. So it's 40 lines. So it's not as long as my arch. 
but it's a lot longer than my Debian one. And the reason why is that when I install FreeBSD using their installer, it gives you a very, very basic install. So that's why I have more apps there <laughs> than I do. Because when you go through the Debian installer, it gives you all kinds of stuff, even stuff you may not want. But FreeBSD, it's almost like installing Arch, but it's different. But it's almost like that, and you get a base install, and that's why I have all these apps. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm not going to read all these apps to you. You can read them yourself. But this has been, this free BSD auto app file, I really worked on this a week ago, because I hardly had any stuff in here. There was only a few apps in there, and I expanded it. Now, I'm going to change something, and the reason why is that in FreeBSD and GhostBSD as well, to install the Qtal window manager, this is the name, pi311-qtile. And it's in the script now, and the script will work. But what's going to happen is, is that when Qtile does another update, in BSD, <laughs> in the BSD repositories, the name for Qtile is going to change. So it's going to be, I don't know, it might be pi312-qtile or pi313-qtile. And when this number changes here, so if you see line 31, when Qtile gets an update and that number changes, my script will no longer work. So if Qtile gets an update and it's called pi312-qtile, if you go to run the script, it's going to say it doesn't recognize pi311-qtile, and the script won't work at all. <laughs> the script will stop working. It won't install anything. And then whoever is using my script is going to think the script is broken and my script is no good and so forth. So I'm going to take it out now. Like I said, in BSD, right now it is pi311-qtile, so it will work. But I'm going to take it out. And then I'm going to kick it upstairs to update my uh, GitLab repository. So by the time this video is finished, if you go to download it, you'll be downloading it without that. So let's delete it. Let's save the file. I'm going to go back into my run config. Vim run config. Now, if you've seen the run config for my FreeBSD, it's still going to have on line 8, it's still going to be copying my Qtile configuration file into your dot into your home directory dot config and that's no harm that won't harm anything if you want to install qtile then you're going to have to do this and i'm going to show you so what i'm going to do now is flip over to a virtual machine of freebsd okay <laughs> i'm not in the virtual machine of freebsd i'm in a virtual machine of ghostbsd but ghostbsd is built upon FreeBSD and they work the same. And it just so happened it I forgot. I thought I had a FreeBSD open. I have a GhostBSD, but it's the same thing. So for starters, if you're running GhostBSD, I mean you could just use their um, software center. So click it on, put your password in, and of course, like I said. And running the auto config file and installing my configuration file for Qtile won't damage anything. Okay, so it's just syncing the packages. So in GhostBSD, of course, you can go into the graphical software center and select that large screen and just go in here and just type in Qtile and it's going to bring it up. Regardless of whether it's the current version or a newer updated version, and regardless of what the number is, like pi 311 qtile or pi 312 or pi 313 qtile or whatever that number happens to be, it's going to bring it in and you can install it. But if you want to, let's just close this now. Let's open up a terminal. You know what? I'm just going to change this to Zesh. If you're in GhostBSD or if you're in FreeBSD and you want to install qtile, and if it's been updated and the numbers change, that's why I'm taking it out of my auto app configuration file you would just do this pkg search qtile hit enter and now it's telling you it's pi311-qtile 
Then, if you're going to install it in the terminal, and this will work for FreeBSD or GhostBSD, sudo package install py311 qtile tab it, and there it is. So that's what you would do, and you can do this in GhostBSD if you don't want to use the graphical software center, or you could do it in FreeBSD in the terminal because you might not have a graphical software center in there, right? So you're going to do a search. You're going to do package search qtile. Find out what the number is. Right here, you're going to do package search qtile. You're going to find out what the new number is, the new updated number. And then you're just going to type it in, sudo package install pi311 qtile. And you're going to hit enter. You're going to put your password in. And of course, it's saying right here, the most recent version is already installed. Okay. So that's FreeBSD. And now I'm going to go into GhostBSD. So let's CD. Let's CD into Ghost. Let's clear the screen. Let's ls it dash A. So this is my GhostBSD folder, and I added quite a bit to that as well. I added, I well, Awesome was already there, I think. <laughs> so I added the i3 window manager configuration, the i3 status, and the Qtile. And let's just go into uh, run config, vim run. So my run config file is very small here. <laughs> and it's just going to copy a few wallpapers over. It's going to copy my Xenet X resources, my Zesh configuration file. And it's going to copy my configuration files for Awesome, Qtile, and i3. Okay. And there's no configuration files for, a fire, for PF firewall because... Like I said, GhostBSD is built on FreeBSD, and FreeBSD and GhostBSD come with several different types of firewalls. And GhostBSD, by default, has the firewall turned on and a fantastic configuration file for your firewall already installed, turned on, and running by default. So I don't have to do anything about the firewall in here. And let's close that. And let's do go into the auto. Vim auto. And the GhostBSD auto app configuration file is a lot smaller than the FreeBSD one. And the reason why, like I said, with FreeBSD, it's almost like installing a base install of Arch. It's a base install of BSD. And then you put whatever apps or programs you want in there. But GhostBSD is built on FreeBSD. And GhostBSD is more of a full running uh, operating system. So GhostBSD gives you a lot of programs and apps that you will need or that you might want by default. So I don't have to have a big file here. So it's just a few things, right? You know, it's going to install Awesome, i3, LibreOffice, the LibreWolf, right? You look at um, line 11 is LibreWolf, web browser, the heart and fork of Firefox. And nitrogen, sorry, nitrogen, it's going to install Remina Thunderbird for email, Remina for desktop, remote desktop environment, and so forth. And Zash at the bottom. So you can see it's a lot smaller because GhostBSD is more of a user-friendly uh, distribution or operating system. And it get, they give you a lot of stuff that you would need so you don't have to install a lot of its stuff after the fact. And I'm going to take the Qtile out because, like I mentioned with FreeBSD, once Qtile gets updated, it's going to have a different number at the front. It's going to be Pi 312 or Pi 313 or whatever. And the script won't work. <laughs> when you go to run the script, it will run dead. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to save the file. And I'm going to update it to my GitLab repository. So when you run my run configs file, it's still going to install the Qtile, my Qtile window manager configuration file into your home dot configuration directory, no harm. But if you want Qtile installed in GhostBSD, you're either going to have to go into the graphical software center and install it, do a search for it and install it, or go into the terminal and do a search for it and then install it like I just showed you a few moments ago. Okay, now let's CD out of there. Let's, let's ls it again, and let's go into Linux Mint Debian. And I think I had a Linux Mint uh, Ubuntu before. Now I separated them, and I made two folders. I have a Linux Mint Debian and a Linux Mint Ubuntu. CD into Linux 
Mint Debian first because it's the first one in the list. Let's clear the screen. Let's ls it. And in Linux Mint Debian, I'm going to give you the awesome window manager configuration file and my configuration file for the i3. Okay, for i3 and i3 status. Now let's take a look at the run config. Vim run. So in my Linux Mint Debian, the run config file is pretty small. It's going to copy my wallpapers, a few files, line four. It's going to copy my XNRC, my X resources, my Zesh configuration file, and my I'm wheel configuration file. I'm wheel is for your mouse scroll speed. And it's going to copy my awesome window manager config, my i3 window manager config, and my i3 status configuration. And it's not going to do anything with the firewall because Linux Mint comes with G uncomplicated firewall and G uncomplicated firewall is the graphical firewall. And all you got to do is go into the graphical thing and turn it on or the graphical app and turn it on. Okay. Now let's take a look at the apps. Vim auto. So you can see the apps here. I only have a 28 lines. Of and again, it's going to install awesome clam antivirus. CMUS is a uh, line eight. CMUS is a music player that works in the terminal. It's going to install i3. It's going to install nitrogen for wallpaper, GIMP, HTOP, I am wheel, Caden Live, LX Appearance, NeoFetch, NumLock, OBS Studio, Papyrus Icon Theme, PC Man FM for file management, Remina for remote desktop, the Tor web browser, Vim, Xterm, and Zesh. And again, be, I'm not installing a lot of apps here because Linux Mint Debian gives you a full suite of apps already installed by default. And there's no Qtile here because Qtile is not in the Debian repos. i3 window manager is and the awesome window manager is. Let's get out of there. Now let's CD out of there and let's take a look at Linux Mint Ubuntu. Sorry, I got to CD into Linux Mint Ubuntu. Clear the screen, ls-a. And there's the files there. And of course it has the awesome window manager, the i3 status, and the i3 window manager, just like the Debian one, Debian one does. Let's vim into run. And the run configs, it looks the same as the other one. <laughs> okay. It looks the same as the one that's in Debian. Let's close it. And there was a reason why I made two folders for this, and I'm trying to remember why. Let's take a look at the auto apps. Vim auto. So again, there's not much in here. Uh, you know, there, it's pretty much the same as uh, the one for Debian. And again, there's not too much in my. Uh, I did add some. I mean, if we go here, I added some to my uh, Linux Mint Ubuntu folder because I hardly, I think I only had like two or three things in here. So I added quite a few apps, but it's not like my Arch folder or my Arch uh, auto app configuration file or script, or script if you want to call it a script, okay? And these are things that they're not going to give you by default in Linux Mint Ubuntu or Linux Mint Debian. And let's get out of there. Let's just, and let's CD out of there. I'm just going to take a quick look at my void, okay? So the void folder is the only one I didn't update, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And let's CD into void. And you can see I have my wallpapers there. Let's vim into, and you can see I have Qtile folder. I have an awesome folder and a Qtile folder. And let's vim into run configs. Oh, and I have it setting up on complicated firewall. Hmm. I forgot that I did that. So my run config is going to install awesome. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give you my awesome and Qtile configuration file into your home.config directory, my Zesh file, and it's going to set up the firewall. Now, let's get out of there and let's just go into auto app, vim auto. And it's going to give you a few, not a lot. <laughs> it's a pretty small list, but it's going to give you Rhythmbox, LX Appearance, the full LibreOffice suite, HTOP, awesome window manager, uncomplicated firewall, Qtile, Vim, volume icon, Xterm, Zesh, and so forth. Now, let's get out of here. Let's CD minus one. 
and let's clear the screen let's ls it so these are my folders and like i mentioned earlier at the beginning of the video the void folder is from march now we're in the middle of october so out of all these folders everything's been updated things have been changed i tested things to make sure they're working properly you know i went into freebsd into ghostbsd into linux mint debian linux mint ubuntu i went into pure debian because i have a pure debian folder here and in Arch linux i made sure things were functioning properly but the void folder hasn't been updated since march so if you download my configuration files and you run my void folder and something's not working that's why so one of these days i plan to uh, make a new virtual machine of void linux to play with it and to become reacquainted with it and then to see if all the scripts in my void folder are working and to see if anything needs to be changed or updated and when that happens i'll let you know because you'll see my new video on void linux then you'll know that it's done because before i I make and post a new video on Void Linux. I'm going to update my config file, my config folder for Void in my GitLab repository. And also, too, uh, please let me know if you ever download any of these folders or you download my GitLab repository and you run a script out of any of these folders and you run a script and something's not working, it doesn't work, let me know and I'll see if I can fix it. And if you've never downloaded my GitLab repository before, you're going to do git clone https colon slash slash gitlab.com slash artibus one slash mench dot git. And this command is in the show notes of all my videos. And if you already downloaded my GitLab repository a while back and you want to update it, then you're going to cd into the mench folder. And you're going to do a git pull and hit enter. Now, if it's already up to date, it's going to give you an output that says already up to date. <laughs> if it's not up to date, it's going to download all my updated configuration files. And that's it. In this video, I talked about my GitLab repository and my configuration files that's free for anyone to download and use. And I talked about how I changed them and how I updated them, and I gave you a tour. Now, the only one I didn't update was my Void Linux folder, and I'm going to save that until after I do a new video on Void Linux. And by the time I release my next video on Void Linux, that folder will be updated. And I showed you how to download my GitLab repository and how to update it. I hope you learned something today, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Lennox Mensch.